you. Today, one in five children living in the U.S. lives in poverty, a circumstance associated with widespread inequities in both the physical and the psychological environments to which children are exposed. Children who grow up in environments of poverty are more likely to struggle to concentrate, to remember, to control their behavior, and to tackle complex areas of learning. So children in poverty do disproportionately worse in school. The gap in achievement can be seen um, across a variety of academic measures, grades in school, scores on standardized tests, as well as indices of social and emotional development. And these consequences are persistent. These cognitive and non-cognitive skills then go on um, to determine a range of adult outcomes, um, including things like educational attainment. <laughs> Children who grow up poor are less likely to go on to graduate high school um, and to enroll and to complete college. Um, they're less likely to secure consistent employment, um, have lower adult earnings, uh, criminal activity, a variety of measures of adult health, um, and also family formation. Um, however, despite our accumulated knowledge and the numerous studies documenting this link between family resources and child development, we still understand very little about why or exactly how it is that poverty is translated into these deficits in cognition and achievement. At the same time, there's more and more evidence that environmental experiences and circumstances can affect our physical health and development. We know that adverse childhood experiences, growing up in poverty, um, experiencing chronic stress, trauma, can profoundly affect the structure and function of the developing brain. And these areas of the brain that we see are vulnerable to environmental circumstances and experiences govern tasks um, that influence a number of adult outcomes. So here in this graph, we see just one example of self-control being highly predictive of criminal activity or having ever been convicted of a crime. So really taking all of this information together and pulling on these various bodies of research, we wanted to better understand what might explain um, this link between childhood circumstances and achievement. Um, in particular, we wanted to know if there might be a neurobiological channel, so a pathway operating through the brain um, that might um, help us tie together a story where adverse childhood experiences influence the brain, which then um, contribute to these gaps um, that we've long observed um, in important outcomes. So in order to tackle this question, um, we were using a large study that was supported by the National Institutes of Health um, that allowed us to analyze MRI scans of hundreds of children and adolescents from across the United States. Um, these children were between the ages of 4 and 18 at the time the study started. Um, and they were followed. They continued to come back in and get repeated brain scans for a period of seven years. Um, in addition to neuroimaging data, right, the brain scans, uh, they also collected basic information on these children's households, as well as their performance on a number of cognitive and psychosocial uh, measures, um, including their scores on standardized tests of academic achievement, which is the outcome that our team focused on. All right, so in doing our study, we carefully selected the areas or portions of the brain um, that we wanted to include. Um, first and foremost, we wanted to really focus on areas of the brain that continue to develop for an extended period after birth, and therefore most likely to be vulnerable um, to the environmental um, experience. We also wanted to highlight regions of the brain um, that are tied to tasks that are critical for school readiness as well as later adult milestones. Um, so specifically, uh, we selected the frontal lobe. So the frontal lobe is an area of the brain that's kind of located up here uh, towards the front of your skull. 
Um, and that area of the brain controls um, what we refer to or call executive functions. Um, so it controls things like behavior regulation, your control of attention, problem solving, and complex learning. We also chose the temporal lobe. Um, so you can see the temporal lobe is highlighted there. It kind of runs along the side. Um, and your temporal lobe is tied to memory as well as language comprehension. Um, and finally, we selected the hippocampus, which is actually a smaller structure within the temporal lobe um, that's been studied quite a bit due to its ties to long-term memory and stress responses. So what did we find? Like others, we found clear differences in the development of crucial brain structures, uh, particularly among children from the poorest households. So those living under the federal poverty line or around $24,000 for a family of four. Um, and what these differences mean, or when I talk about these differences, what we saw was that children living in poverty tend to have less of what we call gray matter um, in these areas of the brain and that the differences um, in these areas that control tasks like focusing attention, problem solving, language comprehension, and memory ultimately contributed um, to the differences that we have long observed um, in poor children's underachievement. Um, and specifically in our sample, we estimated that up to 15 to 20 percent of low-income children's underachievement could be explained um, by developmental differences in the frontal and temporal lobes. Now, before you start to feel disheartened, I think it's important to note that this work does not imply that low-income children's ability is somehow predetermined. Um, in earlier work, where we were able to study a sample of younger children uh, from infancy through age four, we found that the brain, regardless of family circumstances, looked very similar close to birth. It's also extremely important um, to recognize um, that this work does not imply that these children are somehow at a permanent disadvantage, right? I think that this challenge, I believe, presents an opportunity. Um, we know that the brain is malleable. It exhibits what we call plasticity. And so it continues to respond to changes in the environment, positive as well as negative. And it actually continues to develop um, and change structurally well in um, to our 20s. Um, so to me, this suggests a hope um, that with the right intervention, um, it could be possible to alter this well-documented, long-standing link between childhood circumstances um, and achievement. And I think that this type of research, while new, um, can and should uh, be influencing poverty discussions. Thank you.